Hi there, Hayden here from BlenderTutorials.org and today I have a super special video for you. This is, in fact, the first collaboration for this channel. And today we're collaborating with a very awesome Blender YouTuber here on YouTube, Sadi. Today, what we're gonna do is we agree to have a bit of a friendly challenge. It's not a competition, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and model a object within a specified amount of time and just see how far we get. There's only a few rules such as what the object has to be, where it's situated and the time limit, naturally. The purpose of this video is to show the differences in techniques and approaches that two different artists can have even with the same brief. So I hope that's what you take away from today's video. If you finish watching this video, please head over to Sadi's video. Let's jump straight in. So my first step is that I want to collect some references. Now, because I don't have that much time, I want to be as fast as possible. So I'm only going to grab a few references. And by a few, I mean search Google far too long than I actually needed to. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop my reference in just so I can see what I'm working with here. It's really important to have a reference for whatever you're making in 3D. Even if you don't copy it exactly, having a reference just allows you to spring ideas off something very quickly. So right now what I'm doing is that I'm using the skin modifier to essentially build out the structure or the main shapes of my tree branches just by using vertices and edges, which is really effective. I'm using control A to shrink and fatten the branches as I go. Like that might do for now. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the overall shape that we're getting. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is I don't want to start any texturing just yet. Let's just take the time. Okay, five minutes just about have gone by. In this part, I noticed that there are a few areas on the tree that I'm not happy with. I really wanted to kind of give it a bit more of a wild shape. So that's what I'm just doing here. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. I'm just going to say new. And now I'm just going to call this scene a branch detail. And I'm going to add a sapling tree gen. I don't think any tree tutorial or tree video in Blender is complete without the sapling tree gen add-on which you can enable from your preferences and then add on tab. What I'm using this tree gen for right now is not to actually create a tree, but rather to quickly generate a branch that I'm then going to render out as a billboard. The add-on can create really great shapes and I do highly suggest it if you're interested in using it just for really quick trees. I personally like to add a little bit of noise to it, especially when it comes to creating a tree like the gum tree because Australian flora is actually really wild looking. Uh, it's very random and chaotic, which is something I actually really enjoy about it compared to uh, European flora. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm laying out the billboards on the edges of, well, the structure of my tree. Now, this decision is actually going to come back to bite me later on because what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add another noise texture to my shape, which is actually going to displace the branches off from their original position, which is the position I'm basing all the positions on right now. So should have thought that through a little bit more, but you know, these things happen, especially when you're under a time constraint situation like this. And in that regard, I just want to remind everyone to definitely head over to Sadi's channel and check out his version of creating a tree in 30 minutes. What he's created is absolutely amazing and you don't want to miss it. What I'm about to start doing here is something that I've been experimenting with in my Unity game projects. Uh, I'm going to create a billboard of leaves, but they're not going to be connected to the branches like you usually see in a lot of 
other game projects. Rather, they're going to be sort of freestanding. And this technique is inspired somewhat by uh, Tarzan, in a way. So what they did in Tarzan, and you can see it in some of the behind the scenes, is they basically painted what you could almost consider dots in different shades of green and then overlay them in 3D on top of each other. I'm probably not doing a, a great service in regards to the description of um, what I mean by that, but it's very similar to what I'm doing here, although far better executed. Um, and I find it gives a rather volumetric effect to the leaves. Uh, now, given a bit more time, I definitely would have gone in here and broken up those shapes a little bit more with a few other billboards, uh, because right now it's looking a bit too rounded. Um, but that's okay, it gives the voluminous effect without without being too problematic, which, uh, which can occur with some foliage situations, especially in, in game design. I think the downside of this technique is that I really have to play around manually with the positions but by joining things together in a group so just by selecting things using your shift key and then using control or command j you can quickly build up essentially a library of quick assets that you can use to fill out the shapes which is what i'm doing here so i've just got a group of these billboards and i'm just pulling them all over the place at this point just trying to match them up with the branch billboards Okay, let's see where we're going. Let's add a sun, drop that down to two. And what I'm just gonna do is just gonna grab uh, everything. <laughs> uh, except that, let's grab all of that. Perfect. Um, and convert to mesh. How much time? One minute, 30 seconds. Oh no. Um, is that the materials? Drunk. Let's smooth it out. Let's add our... Oh no, I need to make that alpha clip. I need to make that alpha clip. There we go. And roughness, we need to put that roughness all the way up. And then we need to turn our camera clipping to there. 46 seconds left. Uh, what can I do? seconds and a wave uh, just get rid of it one second uh, okay that's it what do I have here is my tree oh my what a challenge that was 30 minutes might sound like a really long time, but in the world of 3D, that can sometimes be a blink of an eye. And at the end of the day, this wasn't a competition between Sadi and myself. This was to show this collaboration was, in my opinion, all about how two artists can approach the same brief in a very different way. And I really, really suggest heading over to Sadi's channel, the link is in the description below, to have a look at his attempt at creating a tree in 30 minutes. I've already seen it and I think you're gonna be blown away by what he's done. What he's done is incredible. 
This video is all about difference and difference in execution, difference in style and difference in methodology. So just remember, when you're modeling something, when you're creating something, you're creating something that only you would create. 3D at the end of the day is a problem solving endeavor. It is an artistic endeavor, all wrapped in one nice neat basket. And I really hope that this video along with Sadi's video in conjunction prove to you just how different methodologies can be. If you yourself want to give this challenge a try, so just sit down for 30 minutes and try and create a tree from scratch. So that means just going at it for 30 minutes and then stopping when that timer rings. Definitely send me some pictures of your results. I would love to see it. You can send me them at my Twitter, which is in the description below. Now, if you haven't heard already, I'm starting up a new website called blendertutorials.org, which is going to be a website specifically targeted to beginners initially to help jumpstart them in learning Blender. So it's going to cover from A to Z all the really itty gritty basics that you need to know to get up and running. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Fausen from blendertutorials.org signing off with a very special thank you to Sadi. All the best.